It is a DMV first warned day. Parts of our area are currently under a flood watch or warning, and we're seeing, Anne Lisa, just so much of the flooding uh, in different parts. And you can see the damage there, the trees down in Falls Church, Virginia. Uh, it is certainly a mess in parts of the DMV. And this is video from Jennifer Wood with the police department. That car you see partly under the tree on Park Avenue. It's a police car. No one was inside when that tree came crashing down, thankfully. Uh Go ahead, I'm sorry. All right, let's get over to Max Marcilla now. He's live for us in Old Town Alexandria, Mark, and you see that flooding behind him. Tough right. to watch there, Mark. Yeah, Max, that water was climbing at the top of the hour. How's it looking right now? It's still climbing, Mark and Annalisa. Good evening, and we're going to show you because all throughout the afternoon and into the early evening with Haley Mylon, we were showing you what the weather, what the rain and the flood accumulation looks like on King Street. Now we're seeing even the side streets are getting a, an accumulation of flooding. Take a look. So what you're seeing now is the intersection of uh, over there on King Street. That's where a lot of businesses are. It's a very vibrant downtown area in Alexandria. It's been known to flood and it's been flooding for hours. But now what we're seeing is even the side streets and we're gonna take a look um, past some of these businesses near the parking garage. There's some flooding there, cars turning around. As we go a little bit further to our right, you'll see the parking garage. No cars are going in and out. They could, but no one is out on these roads because they are. it is really dangerous and the water is really high. You can take a look down further down along King Street. I believe that's by Cameron, where police have extended which how far in this road they are blocking off. Of course, the businesses, they have sandbags on their doors. They are trying to keep the floodwaters out. We spoke with people who live here, who work here uh, at these restaurants and shops, and they say this rising water Look, anytime there's rain, it's going to be a problem in this area just because of the proximity to the Potomac as well as some of the, the storm drainage issues that they've had over the years. But when you see rising waters like this, it really goes to show that this is not just any regular rainfall. So throughout the afternoon, now into the evening and eventually through the night, we're going to keep an eye on the flooding in these on these streets, how these businesses are coping, most of them. There are still people inside, if not only because they can't get out. So that's what we're keeping an eye on. And as the rain continues, as the flood grows and the flood zone expands, we'll report back to you. All right, Max Marcilla, thank you. And we're continuing our team coverage on this DMV First Warn Day, starting with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And Janessa, tough to see that flooding where Max is at. And it's getting dark, so it's hard to see it as well. Yeah, all week long, our team has been talking about this being a nocturnal uh, severe situation. What that means is that you have a flash flood event that's going to happen in the dark. And so I need you to be uh, really connected with us on, on air, online, whatever you got to do to keep you safe. That's what we're here uh, for, to save your life uh, with this life-threatening situation with all this flash flooding uh, that's ongoing. We have so many reports that are coming in. Uh, we do have standing water for the outer loop of the Beltway Route 1 in Prince George's County. And so that's a low-lying area as well. And so water is creeping up slowly but surely on that outer loop area. If you have flights uh, and you're trying to get out of the DMV, it's just not going to happen. Uh, tonight we have over 100 delays at DCA with cancellations up to 40 now uh, Dulles up to uh, 60 delays uh, 70 uh, 17 flights at this point uh, that are canceled and so you have a good grip of water that is going to continue to stream up from the south I have flash flood warnings at this point that stretch nearly 200 miles I mean it's going from northern Virginia all the way up towards uh, Baltimore County that's how long large and expansive uh, this storm system about 150 miles uh, we're not going to go county by county at this point uh, because there's just too many to count uh, they mostly all expire across the DMV around midnight and that's what I'm going to say with all these warnings now coming in you'll be safe around midnight with the water starting to recede uh, but at this point it's just too many across the area and all of us are continuing to be in that, that flash flood 
zone uh, for the rest of uh, this evening. So here's the moisture. It's steadily coming in across the, uh, the DMV from northern Virginia, and then we have another good wave that's about to make its way in. Here's the power outage situation. We have been reiterating uh, this, that the worst of the wind is going to come in around 8 o'clock tonight, and look at all these power outages uh, across Fairfax County, Prince George's County, all of the DMV at this point. About five, 4,000 customers uh, for, for Fairfax County without power, and those are going to expand here in the next few hours or so uh, from Anne Arundel County into Prince George's County as well. Uh, you're seeing a little gaps where it's not a problem, but we, got, we are going to have a line around 7, 8 o'clock that kind of stretches across uh, the region. It's trying to come together. Let's show them southbound, uh, Damon, uh, where that line is starting to uh, really impact Richmond, parts of North Carolina. Uh, what we are watching for, will that line really kind of impact our northern areas? There it is. Will it stretch up the corridor of I-81 and then make its way into I-95 corridor? That is the big question. And at this point, we want to make sure you are ready uh, 7 30 8 o'clock going into 9 o'clock for damaging wind gusts I mean uh, this is pretty much a severe situation where we've already seen some wind flow up to hurricane force across uh, the DMV Mark and Anna, Annalisa uh, Janessa, thank you. And you heard uh, Janessa, she said that the system's going to continue to create challenges not only during the evening commute, but a little bit later on uh, in the evening as well. Especially with those trees down. Let's get out to Randy Bass, who is driving around right now in College Park. Randy, what are you seeing? Yeah, Mark and Elisa, a lot of down trees around the region. We're trying to find the one that's causing traffic jams here in busy College Park, Maryland tonight. We're not far from the Montgomery County, Prince George's County line, the Adelphi area. If you're familiar with that part of town, I'm giving you a live look right now as those conditions start to worsen here in Prince George's. You see those heavy bands of rain starting to move through rain over the last hour or so has actually been pretty light as we've been driving around through eastern Montgomery County, western Prince George's that rain really starting to pick up along with those winds. We've driven by trees and flags that are just waving across the road. Some cars right now actually pulling over onto the side, letting these bands of rain come through so that way they can see on the other side. Very, very busy through here. Definitely going to want to slow down if you're heading out on the road right now. If you absolutely have to, if you don't stay inside, good night to make dinner at home for sure. Again, we are on our way to this report of a downed tree that's blocking a large stretch of Metzeret Road between Adelphi and University Boulevard, right near the University of Maryland campus. If you know the campus, it's right near the University of Maryland's golf course on the backside. So we are on our way there right now, again, causing some trouble if you're moving through the College Park area. But again, some advice that will stick with you regardless of you're in College Park or Manassas Park. Make sure you're giving yourself plenty of time before you're heading out on the roads tonight and be very careful if you've got to get behind the wheel. For now, though, live in College Park, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. All right, Randy, thank you. Definitely a good night to take it slow. And joining us now is our Leonard and Fleming. He's joining us from live from the wharf in southwest Washington, where we're seeing some flooding there. Leonard, how's it looking? Well, it looks very, very difficult over here. You know, you see behind me, there is a, a snap tree here in the background. And you can see this fence that is completely, almost completely covered with water. You see that sign area closed due to unsafe conditions. You can't even see the condition sign. And you've got a lot of debris here in the water, debris that's just washing up on shore here where water isn't supposed to be. We're going to walk along this. I am uh, in basically foot deep, ankle deep water here. I'm not going to go any deeper. You can see how, how far along the water has flooded this area. The wharf is literally right across the, uh, the Potomac River here. So you can see how far the water has come up and receded almost now in this area to the street here on Ohio Street. Uh, and we got traffic coming through. We're going to cross the street here for just a second and show you this area here that's also flooded. So now you've got flooding in this part of the median here where there's a lot of flood he flooding here as well as on this street. And we are very, very close to uh, Reagan Airport where you can hear those planes 
coming in for a landing. You hear the roar of it, and it's almost shocking to see how those planes can land when this wind really whips through, which I'm not even holding an umbrella because I know that wind is going to blow that umbrella into the uh, into the river. So reporting here uh, in uh, southeast uh, D.C., Leonard and Fleming, back to you. All right, Leonard, definitely take it slow out there if you are outside right now. Right, let's check in with meteorologist Damon Madsen for the closer look at the numbers we've seen so far today. Yeah, guys, and I just got an update here. Scott just passed it off to me here from the National Weather Service in Montgomery County, Silver Spring 1080 Good Hope Road, large tree down DOT en route with a cut crew to take care of that tree, blocking a large extent of an area there. So yes, we continue to have these reports flooding trees down and power outages. This is going to continue to be a problem as the worst of this storm system works through. And again, thus far we have had multiple areas of flooding with that rainfall now starting to approach two inches on the day. Flood watches remain in effect all the way into tomorrow morning and along some of our coastal locations as well. We're not just dealing with the heavy rainfall. We're also dealing with the tides starting to make their way in as we have coastal flood warnings covering all of Southern Maryland up into portions of Virginia. Virginia and DC right along the tidal Potomac River and the Chesapeake Bay. We're getting high tide with wind pushing that water in at the same time. That's what you're seeing there in Alexandria with that flooding really starting to get bad. And there you have it, folks. Again, wind is going to be another major issue, especially over the next few hours. We have high wind warnings in effect for the DC Metro, the I-95 corridor in Southern Maryland. We could see those gusts approaching 55 miles per hour. Wind advisories cover the rest of the DMV or we could see gusts as high as 50 miles per hour. So as we move into the night and this is now a nocturnal events with the sun now set, we're going to continue to see additional issues and the worst of the storm system crossing through. So we'll continue here through the rest of the evening into the overnight, provide you with the latest as this storm continues through the DMV.